This is not alkaline. Hello there, my name is Marcus Rothkranz. I have not eaten meat in almost 40 years. I turned 61 this year and I have been into and given talks on raw veganism in major cities all over the world for the last 15 years and I've been on almost every morning talk show across the country with Kara promoting our raw vegan cookbook, Love on a Plate, which you can get at healthycookbook.com. I wrote over a dozen books including the classic Heal Yourself 101 and the world's top edible plant guide, Free Food and Medicine, as well as the Free Food and Medicine documentary. I wrote over 80 ebooks on almost every major health condition and was health consultant to military WMD first responders. These are the guys that go in with hazmat suits when there's a chemical, biological, or nuclear attack. I also like Tom Jones music, but that's besides the point. Uh, but let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you and some of the stuff you see on the internet. Just like new eggs are hatched every year, there are some newbies hatching onto the internet scene saying the same. <laughs> Once again, that fruits and vegetables are good because they are alkaline and bad for foods cause acidosis and bone loss. Here we go again with the acid is bad and alkaline is good myth. This was all debunked a decade ago and it's just not going away. <laughs> yes, it's nice to promote a healthy lifestyle and diet, that's great, but please learn some basic biochemistry and biology before charging people money for advice. Plants are not alkaline and the body is not simply just one pH level. Each part has a very specific pH level and these are highly regulated and cannot be changed or else you would die. If you were able to make the blood more alkaline, you would have a condition called alkalosis, which is an extremely dangerous condition that will kill you from oxygen deprivation. Now, some of you might remember a few years ago, I did a video where I took some pH meters and actually tested the pH of all kinds of healthy fruit, vegetables, and greens, you know, food that people call alkaline. And guess what? They weren't alkaline. Most were either neutral or slightly acidic. You can do this yourself. Just get a pH meter and test your food. Even cucumbers and watermelon are acidic. Ah, they say, but it's not the pH of the food. It's alkaline forming in the body or it's the pH of the resulting ash. The whole acid alkaline ash thing started a long time ago when somebody burned food and analyzed the ashes. This is where all the food pH charts originated. Then the assumption started floating around that the same result must happen in the body as if combustion and metabolism are the same thing. It's not. One is a combustion process where byproducts like hydrogen escape into the air, which is not possible in the stomach. All foods, regardless of the original pH or its ash content, metabolize into acids and the ash content has no effect on your pH. Virtually all pH in the body is regulated through respiration and kidney function where our pH is maintained primarily by the retention or excretion of hydrogen ions, protons, or to a lesser extent, buffers, which I'll post links to down below. Acids are bad, really. The body is made up of acids. It's run by acids for like digestion, absorption, blood pressure control, cellular energy production, tissue formation, bone remodeling, oxygenation of tissues, and detoxification all involve acids. So it's funny these newbies keep saying how important detoxification is. Well, that requires acids. We can't even survive or even exist without acids. All foods metabolize into acids. This is basic human physiology. Plants can actually produce more acids during metabolism than meat and they often have higher acidity levels to begin with. The benefits of raw diets come from the higher nutritional value and phytochemicals, most of which again are acids. All foods that leave the stomach are acidic. Think about it. What is the stomach? It's a pot of boiling acid. You put anything in there, it's going to turn into acid, right? But when the food leaves your stomach and goes into the intestines, that's where secretions from the pancreas neutralize the stomach acid. So no matter what you eat, the food in your stomach is acidic and the food in your intestines is alkaline. Changing your diet isn't gonna change any of this. You know, it, you cannot change any part of your body, the pH, except urine. Your bloodstream and organs control acidity in a very narrow range. If anything actually changed acidity in your body, you would get very sick and it could even kill you. All chemical reactions in your body are started by chemicals called enzymes. Like you could take chemical A and turn it into chemical B and that produces energy. Then enzymes must be there to start these reactions and all enzymes function again in a very limited narrow range of acidity. If your blood changes pH for any reason, it's very quickly changed back to the normal pH so these, so these enzymes could function. Otherwise they would not function and the chemical reactions needed for your body to run would not happen and you would be dead. Okay, alkaline urine. This is another thing. Oh, I tested my urine. It was alkaline. <laughs> okay. Did you know that urinary tract infections create highly alkaline urine because the bacteria uses the enzyme urease to split urea into highly alkaline ammonia? 
This alkalinity helps the bacteria to survive. Saliva or urine pH has nothing to do with blood pH. The only way you can determine blood pH is with a blood test. Now, the mouth is alkaline because if it was acidic, your teeth would melt. And ironically, one of the most bacteria-infested parts of the body is the mouth. And it's alkaline. Okay, and then there's the bone density and calcium being pulled from the bones myth. According to this theory, the mythical acid-forming diets will cause a loss in bone mineral density. This is also known as the acid-ash hypothesis of osteoporosis theory. However, this theory ignores the function of your kidneys, which is fundamental to removing acids and regulating body pH. The kidneys produce bicarbonate atoms, ions, that neutralize acids in your blood, enabling your body to closely manage your blood pH. Your respiratory system is also involved in controlling blood pH. When bicarbonate ions from your kidneys bind to acids in your blood, they form carbon dioxide, which we breathe out, and water, which we pee out. The acid-ash hypothesis also ignores one of the main drivers of osteoporosis, a loss of the protein collagen from bone. Ironically, <laughs> the loss of bone collagen is strongly linked with low levels of two acids, orthosilicic acid and ascorbic acid, otherwise known as vitamin C, in your diet. Because bones require orthosilicic acid, ascorbic acid, citric acid, several amino acids, 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 acids. Bones are, <laughs> bones are also only used as a buffer as a very, very last resort uh, and it requires very severe and prolonged acidosis that would leave a person on their deathbed. Acidosis is extremely rare, and acidosis severe enough to pull minerals from the bone is even more rare. I dare you to find a hospital and find a recent case of acidosis. Now, high levels of meat and dairy does rob calcium from the bones, but not because of acidosis. It's from high levels of phosphorus. When phosphorus levels increase too high in the blood, the parathyroid gland releases hormone, PTH, parathyroid hormone, which releases calcium from the bones to balance out the calcium-phosphorus ratio in the blood. Again, this is not acidosis. Okay, then there's the old cancer cells cannot exist in an alkaline environment myth. <laughs> Will this ever go away? We did a video on this 10 years ago. Look up the alkalinemyth.com. Cancer cells themselves are very alkaline and this alkalinity is what allows them to survive and drives glycolysis. Studies have also shown that a healthy cell that's made excessively alkaline, guess what happens to it? The healthy cell morphs into cancer cells. I'll post links down below for all of that because I know a lot of people are not going to believe it, but that's what happens. You know, cancer grows in normal body tissue, which has a slightly alkaline pH of 7.4 and many experiments have successfully grown cancer in an alkaline environment. See the study links below. Actually, one of the most toxic things to the body, and which is produced by the body, is ammonia, which is highly alkaline and toxic. Now, the acids in your body help neutralize ammonia so you don't fall into a coma and die. So the acids are your friends. Okay, inflammation. <laughs> if, Inflammation is not a sign of acidity. If that were the case, then we would almost never get inflammation since the body is maintained almost exclusively in an alkaline state, except for a few areas that need to be acidic, like the stomach, the skin, and the sinuses, vagina, and parts of the intestine. Different parts of the body require different pH levels, like the lymphatic system is slightly more alkaline than blood. Now, as far as the joints go, did you know how many acids are required for healthy joints? Like orthosilicic acid, amino acids, fatty acids, ascorbic acid, hyaluronic acid, just to name a few. Lots and lots and lots of acids. And if acid causes inflammation and alkaline is so good, then why do highly alkaline compounds like potassium hydroxide create massive inflammation when they come into contact with your tissues? Your body is made of acids. Protein is amino acids. Without acids, you wouldn't even exist. The body requires acids to function. Hydrochloric acid, omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids, carbonic acid, hyaluronic acid, glucuronic acid, panathenic acid, citric acid, pyruvic acid, malic acid. Your DNA is nucleic acid. Muscle cells create lactic acid, which is a source of fuel for your mitochondria, which produces energy. Your, your body is mainly made of acids. They're the building blocks of life. Saying acid is bad is like saying water is bad because somebody drowned, therefore water is bad. <laughs> we need numerous acids even in the blood. For example, uric acid. It's one of the main antioxidants for the body. Carbonic acid is even more important because it maintains circulation, it reduces blood pressure, and allows tissue oxygenation. Without acids, you'd be dead. 
Okay, so just to clear things up, the food is not alkaline and the body or the blood cannot turn alkaline or acidic very much or else you would die. This is regulated by breathing and the kidneys. Now, there are foods and substances that can create an acid or alkaline residue that make the kidneys work harder. And if those foods or substances are consumed long term, then kidney failure is possible. So the real acid alkaline battle is mainly in the kidneys, not anywhere else in the body. It's not in your blood and it's not in the body. Your body, your blood doesn't turn alkaline or acidic um, because it has to be maintained at a regular amount. Foods that are the hardest on the kidneys, according to studies, link below for those of you who don't believe it, are animal-based foods like meat, uh, cheese, milk, butter, along with wheat, flour, heavy grains and starches, alcohol, cigarettes, coffee, tea, anything with caffeine, uh, carbonated drinks, sodas, sugary foods, prescription, prescription drugs, steroids, pain meds, cortisone drugs, chlorine, oxalates, calcium pills, antacids, synthetic ascorbic acid, you know, that white crap they call vitamin C, and most of all, stress. So yes, a whole food plant-based diet, raw or cooked, is much better for you than bread and cheese and sugar and coffee and refined oils and meats and dairy and ice cream and alcohol and soda and pizza. I mean, that's common sense. But it's not because of alkaline levels and it has nothing to do with acidosis. So if you hear someone throwing around the word acidosis or alkaline food, they don't really know what they're talking about. They're just regurgitating old myths that have been floating around the internet for years just know that eating things closer to the way we find them in nature is much healthier. That's really all you need to know. Everything else is just social media hype for money and fame. All right, I said it. There, I got it off my shoulders. I feel much better now. There, how many of you are still here? <laughs> how many of you are still paying attention? Eat from nature, minimize stress, and use common sense. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.